we are going to be talking about the differential amplifier. We're going to start off with the circuit analysis and derive VO in terms of V1 and V2. And once we've completed the analysis, I'm going to highlight a unique advantage that this circuit offers. So the first step, as always, is to define my component currents. I'm going to call this I1, and I'm going to call this I2. Because if we treat this as an ideal op amp, no current goes into the inputs of my op amp. So now that I've labeled my component currents, my next step is to label my node voltages. V1, V2, and VO are already labeled, but we have to label the two inputs to my op amp. And for an ideal op amp, these are going to have the same potential. So I can call this VA, and I can call this VA as well. So now that I've finished labeling my circuit, my next step is going to be to write the equations for my components. And in this case, I have four resistors that I need to write equations for. Starting off with R1 and R2, we can say that I1 is equal to V2 minus VA divided by R1, and I1 is also equal to VA divided by R2. Now we can move on to R3 and R4, and I can write that I2 is equal to V1 minus VA divided by R3. And the same current is going to be equal to VA minus VO divided by R4. Now, ultimately, my end goal is to find V out in terms of my inputs. So my next task is to eliminate VA. So to do that, I'm going to solve my two I1 equations for VA. And rearranging these two, we get that VA is equal to R2 V2 divided by R1 plus R2. And really what this is is a voltage divider equation with these two resistors here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to take these two equations and multiply them by R3 and R4 so that way I can get rid of the fractions. And we'll get V1 R4 minus VA R4 is equal to VA R3 minus VO R3. Now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 1 over R3. And I'll also move this to the other side and factor out VA. Negative V1 R4 divided by R3 plus VA R4 plus R3 divided by R3 is equal to VO. Now we're a lot closer. Now we can plug in our value for VA. And this will give us minus V1 R4 divided by R3 plus R2 V2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by R4 plus R3 divided by R3 is equal to VO. Now for this circuit, what's typically done is R1 is set to be equal to R3 and R2 is set to equal R4. So if we do that, something interesting happens. R1 plus R2 cancels with R3 and R4. And these two are the same as these two. So this simplifies down to R4 divided by R3 multiplied by V2 minus V1, and that is going to be equal to VO. So now we know the relationship between our input voltages and our output voltage. Our output ends up being the difference between our two inputs multiplied by the ratio of these R values. So now I'm going to talk about why this subtraction is such a useful thing. So say we have a sensor, and we want to amplify its output, and to interface with our sensor, there's two output leads. And I take these two leads, and I connect these to the inputs of my amplifier. So for something like this, you'd probably want to use a twisted pair. And this is when two wires are wrapped around each other, going between one thing to another. Now say over here, I have a noise source, and there's some kind of electromagnetic interference on those two wires. And they're wrapped together this way, so that way the noise that shows up on one wire is on average equal to the noise that shows up on the other wire. So now the result of this is that V1 is now equal to V1 plus Vn for V noise. And V2 is equal to V2 plus Vn because on average, they're both going to see about the same amounts of noise. So this becomes our new V2 term and this becomes our new V1 term. So now if we use these as our new V1 and V2 values, we get that R4 divided by R3 multiplied by V2 plus Vn minus V1 minus Vn. Now something really interesting happens. Our two noise voltage values get canceled out. So even though there's noise in your environment, your output voltage is still defined by this equation. The noise doesn't propagate to the end. This type of noise is called common mode noise, and that means that the noise is common to both of the inputs. So what's unique about the differential amplifier is that it can reject this common mode noise. 
Other topologies like inverting and non-inverting, those would be considered a single-ended topology. And in those circuits, because you only have the one input term, your output is going to carry this noise value with it. But differential amplifiers have the advantage that it can reject this.